two, or three, take me out to the ball game. Take me out to the crowd. Buy me some peanuts and crack to Jack. I don't care if I ever get back. Oh, it's root, root, root for the zombie. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes, you're out of the old ball. This is the Kristen Gilbrand is from upstate uh, New York, and she is a senator that uh, took the slot that was occupied by Hillary Rodham Clinton. Very interesting situation there. She is a more of a middle of the road type person she was in the house for a very long time representing uh, uh, districts in uh, upstate New York rural uh, communities there predominantly European uh, communities something different um, than some of the other presidential candidates but for Iowa it would be a good fit uh, for her but she has uh, moved uh, to the center and the left of center. She has been extremely vocal on uh, sex uh, discrimination, sex assault. She was one of the lead uh, people in the Senate uh, demanding that Senator Al Franken resign. And there's some a blowback there from the Hillary Clinton forces because she was very critical of Wildville Clinton in his episode. That's very interesting in that we have Je- uh, Jeffrey Epstein now and his uh, situation there. And, of course, he is in jail in Manhattan. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about it. We don't spend a lot of time on, on Jeffrey Epstein because, again... That is a, a criminal matter. Evidently, they found photos in some of his mansions of uh, what appeared to be underage uh, women, young women. Uh, part of the contention here, of course, he's had some very good defense attorneys, including a Ken Starr um, and uh, Alan Dershowitz, who is an Apple attorney who had moved forward to the right. Of course, Epstein uh, being an investor type, uh, being an air type on the scene, um, had association with everyone from Bill Clinton to uh, D.J. Uh, Trump. And D.J. Trump said, well, he was a man that liked the ladies, particularly younger women. That in itself is a says a lot about uh, his makeup, but back to Kristen Gillibrand and her uh, walk through Iowa, so to speak, uh, and she's in the uh, one percentage towel. Uh, one of the one of the things we want to uh, highlight here about the polling, and we will look at the polling on the Monday morning quarterback. But now we're quarterbacking the basic the race itself in uh, South Carolina over the weekend. Joe uh, Lunchbox, a lunch P.O. Biden, finally apologized uh, for his uh, rhetoric on uh, busing. And the busing issue uh, revolved around basically uh, one or two different versions. And Kamala Harris uh, brought that out uh, in a, what would uh, Norman Rockwell a moment. She herself has went into various things. Busing was a very big issue in Boston. We had uh, Louise uh, Hicks in a selfie, uh, being a political opportunist and an outspoken opponent of uh, busing. Busing was just a tool, and the reason that it was used was how neighborhoods were set up during apartheid, or the uh, segregation uh, 
era where um, people of color, primarily at that time African Americans, and in the West some Latinos were in areas uh, that the schools were in fact subst- substandard and there were not the number of uh, Europeans in those areas because what had happened at that particular time, Europeans had moved uh, to suburban uh, areas. Now, what what we've had is a, and that was uh, backtrack a little so we can get three or four stories going here at once. Um, D.J. Trump's uh, father, uh, old man Trump as he was known, uh, Fred Trump was known for building houses for working class people. In fact, Woody Guffrey has a famous song about old man Trump and he was in one of his uh, slummages, uh, so to speak, there. And that's how the Trump family made their money doing um, or building houses for working class uh, people. And that was the basis of the Trump empire. There's also a story in the Post, uh, sometimes we read from the Who Want Today, but involved uh, Fred Trump and Fred Trump Jr. and a gentleman named Nolan who was in the admissions department at uh, Penn and the University of Pennsylvania, of course, the Waffen School, very famous business school there. And at the time, uh, Nolan and uh, Fred Trump Jr. were friends. Uh, Fred Trump Jr. died in, I believe, 1981. Thus, um, his uh, applying uh, to uh, Penn, um, Fred, Fred Trump Jr., that is, was not uh, able to gain admission uh, to the uh, university, but Nolan did, and Nolan was there when his younger brother, uh, D.J. Trump, uh, the current uh, president, uh, applied there, and it was a different situation there. He came from Fordham, uh, D.J. Trump, that is, and he was a transfer student, which generally as a transfer student, you have a greater chance of getting into uh, a university, and the old man Trump went there with him, and they appeared there and talked to some officials at the admissions department, and they were able to get uh, Trump in there. But the whole argument here uh, was around... uh, Intellect or um, knowledge, and Trump tried to say, "Well, he was number one in his class." Turned out he was not; he was fifty-seven. But back to the busing story: the busing course being used as a tool um, to get people from students from the uh, inner city into these uh, various schools that happened to be in uh, suburbia. And there were two versions of uh, basically of bus and busing. Busing that was ordered, uh, as in case in Boston, by Judge uh, Gaddy. And uh, so-called voluntary uh, plan that was set in motion where parents uh, would voluntarily uh, have their uh, kids uh, transported to uh, these various schools as an avenue. No longer in, in even in Boston, no longer under uh, mandatory uh, desegregation plans. Some are, some are not. But so busing is not an issue today, as it was one of the uh, big uh, buzzwords. This was prior to the Tea Party, but you had uh, parents that, uh, out of fear and out of uh, institutional racism, no doubt. Berkeley was uh, cited there. Not everyone was in agreement. So, in fact, uh, when African Americans uh, started to appear in uh, Berkeley, some people moved their uh, children to other school districts. Now, around this uh, particular setting was where Joe Biden uh, made his mark. And when he appeared at Operation Push, I think about two weeks ago, he was reporting to Guardian, and Jesse said, well, he didn't apologize. A mistake on a Joe Biden's uh, part, and he lost uh, points in the polls. 
Thus, uh, his campaign staff uh, convinced him to do an apology. He did the apology, and now it, it goes away, uh, basically speaking. It put Kamala Harris, though, in the, uh, in the driver's seat. Uh, not fundraising, if I can recall. I'm not, I don't have my cheat sheet here. But uh, the fundraising, actually, the last report, Elizabeth Warren bested our own uh, Bernie Sanders by roughly a million dollars. I think she had 19 million and Bernie 18 million, uh, Kamala Harris about uh, 12 million. Uh, Biden uh, was up uh, uh, at, uh, I believe, about 22 million. But he's the institutionalized uh, candidate. Now, the big question here is, can Biden keep his momentum going uh, forward as the polls uh, tend to be uh, tighter? The answer there is uh, you know, probably two, uh, 3,000, something like that a year, which we, we were talking about in the early uh, 70s, a totally uh, different situation than we have uh, today, no doubt about that. So when we start uh, looking at these various plans and these one percenters, where will they go? Well, there'll be some shaking out. Um, Hickenlooper, the former uh, governor of uh, Colorado, was talking about uh, that and some of the shakeout and where the shakeout would uh, put people and his uh, poor performance blaming it on himself and not on anyone else. Well, part of the problem is uh, unprecedented situation where you see a number of candidates, all these candidates around 1% or less, and some fluctuating up to 2%. uh, But you have to look at this not as 1% or 2%. It's if they have any opportunity to get get any forward uh, momentum going at all. Uh, There is that possibility and some of that is dependent on organization. Now, Elizabeth Warren has excellent organization, and she is on the path to move forward. Bernie is well-known and has organization. As we see his campaign, there's some things that we feel that needs to be done more in terms of getting things organized. Uh, the fundraising is in pretty good shape, but other things organized uh, for the long run. And, of course, Biden, a totally different situation there. Kamala Harris, uh, part of the rundown there is she will come out of uh, South Carolina probably as uh, one of the uh, top four uh, candidates. How she would do in I would be very interesting in New Hampshire. Uh, Bernie uh, will have a two or a three slot, no doubt about it. And how he does in Iowa is important, but much more important in New Hampshire. Now, if he can do well in, say, South Carolina, Bernie is on his way. And Bernie is doing better in South Carolina this time around than he was uh, in uh, previous uh, 2016. 2016 was uh, totally different because, again, you had 90-something percent of the establishment Democrats all supporting uh, Hillary Rodham Clinton. And you didn't have a lot of these uh, uh, 0.5 and 1%ers running. You have a lot of now, and that's a little bit confusing. And and this is one of the things that uh, the uh, bourgeois media uh, puts forward there. The commercial uh, newspapers that will put many candidates, it's a very old trick there. Uh, When you have candidates running, you throw in some candidate that doesn't have an opportunity to win but at the same time to muddle things up. And, of course, it's amplified. You had debates, and we can, we have a program on that. The NBC uh, debates, you can find that on uh, iHeart uh, Radio or uh, Google Podcasts. You can use the smart speakers by just saying Boston Red. You should, it should pop up our numbers. Man, we have a number of programs here. And, and I was looking at this. Uh, uh, there was a on a public radio, This American Life, and they had over 600 uh, episodes uh, in their catalog. Uh, at uh, WBRN and Boston Red Network, when we put all of our productions together, we have over 4,000. So we have a variety of productions uh, 
out there uh, over the last uh, 10 uh, plus years. We started out actually uh, in uh, 2007, 2008. We appeared on the Blog Talk and other networks. We were on uh, Jerry Pippen's network actually in uh, 2000 uh, talking about the race that was stolen from Albert Gore. So we've been around doing internet radio for a long time, but trying to stay on this polling. This is why we're in July and not a lot there. As we move uh, through, uh, you'll see some candidates. Victims uh, of his various things. This was, let me get this right here. Uh, this decision was in, in Florida, Miami in 2008. 2008 to enter into an agreement with him that allowed him to avoid federal prosecution, prosecution excuse me, and possibly a life sentence. Um, on the deal, he pled guilty to a state uh, prosecution charges, spent about a year in uh, the Palm Beach jail, and was required to register as a sex offender. He was permitted to leave the facility six days a week to work. Now, that's not unusual. Sometimes people are... are uh, uh, it was overseen by Alexander Acosta, uh, then the U.S. Uh, attorney in uh, Miami, and now uh, he is... I thought it was someone else. Hmm. Anyway, now he is the uh, labor secretary in the Trump administration. That's Alexander Acosta. Uh, I've seen it as a different name. Anyway, the agreement has been examined as serious reports in the uh, Miami Herald and uh, is being uh, challenged in a court. A federal judge ruled earlier the year with Epstein's accusers uh, should have been uh, consulted about the deal before it was signed. The indictment on sealed in Manhattan is uh, says that from uh, 2002 to 2005, and this is the 2005 Epstein and his uh, workers engaged in a sex trafficking scheme, bringing on the uh, age girls to Upper Manhattan East Side Mansion, and to a uh, compound in uh, Palm Beach, uh, Florida. He faces a, a combination of 45 years uh, in a prison if convicted. Well, in other words, that's life. And so he has homes all over the place, Virgin Islands, and et cetera. Won't go into all that. Um, that he has, he has at least uh, seven floors. Uh, this this mansion, a townhouse, twenty one thousand square feet, one of the largest townhouses in uh, Manhattan. He won't be living there much. There, in fact, uh, now uh, they want to keep him in jail and not give him bail. Now that's a very tricky situation, also. Uh, as to uh, will bail be granted or bail will not be uh, granted. The uh, Now, this is a plea agreement granted uh, Epstein immunity from federal prosecution and uh, led him to plead guilty to those charges in the Florida state court there. In April, a federal judge, federal judge ruled that uh, prosecutors had violated the law in ordering the, uh, uh, the, the plea agreement without... Uh, Consulting the victims here in this situation. So, in other words, he was a person of privilege. There's no doubt about that. Now, they have a quote in this story from DJ Trump. Uh, He's a lot of fun to be with. That's what he told the New York Magazine. Uh, It is uh, even said that he liked beautiful women. As much as I do, and many of them are on the younger side. I think DJ Trump would uh, be advised that he shouldn't have said that. But anyway, um, so he was in circles with Prince Andrew. He was with the so called rich and famous. Now, the rich and famous will be running away from him. Uh, they will not be running in his uh, direction. Let me move away from this. We talked about Kristen uh, uh, Gillibrand uh, keeps telling us exactly who she is, and uh, we uh, keep looking over her shoulder for uh, someone uh, more entertaining and more strident and whatever else. Well, yeah, she 
this is Christian Gillibrand, uh, tends to be a bit uh, boring at times. Now, I saw her at uh, the National Action Center, and she was not there. Um, about five minutes after uh, he called, as she called my phone and said, uh, when uh, the ribbon is Sharpton and said to call you, you better be on the phone and calling the uh, the pastor hands a Gilbert the mic and the room is different uh, with applause. Uh, anyway, this is some church uh, uh, podium at the uh, Mount uh, Carmel Missionary uh, Church. This is in Waterloo, Iowa. The, the, the pastor. Uh, Fritz, uh, Whitfield uh, introduced her as uh, his friend, and et cetera, and et cetera, and uh, she does have a favorable, um, I guess, the point with uh, Dr. Al Sharpton, the national leader, no doubt about that. Um, but getting everything uh, out here is a little bit uh, difficult sometimes to do. Let's go to the Treasury here and... This is again from the Washington Post, and I was looking at this, um, the uh, Treasury uh, could uh, breach the debt ceiling in the first half of September, much sooner than previously thought. This is something that comes up all the time. We'll have more of this on a numbers man we'll talk about. It could run out of money. The U.S. government in early September, if Congress doesn't raise the debt ceiling, this used not to be a problem. They used to do it. In a uh, pro forma uh, situation, in uh, May it had projected that the uh, Treasury would wrap uh, until October or November. Well, that has changed. Negotiators to raise the debt ceiling um, bogged down in recent weeks. Well, that's been one of the, uh, I guess, uh, modern day uh, features. Treasury expected to run a deficit uh, roughly of nine hundred billion dollars this year. Uh, before uh, spending uh, far out uh, paces at tax collections. Well, in the outcoming years, and we'll talk more about this uh, on uh, Numbers Man, our financial program, uh, there will be less uh, collections, and of course, a lot of this front load debt has come from tax uh, raises and other things. Now, let me get this in here as we wind the program down. From Moody's Analytics um, says that climate change could cost uh, sixty nine trillion by uh, the year uh, twenty one hundred. We won't be around for that, but that's eighty years out there uh, could inflict. Uh, we we'll have this also numbers, man. Uh, the sixty nine trillion dollars of uh, damage. Uh, just so people understand, the U.S. is now an $18 trillion economy. So when you talk about $69 trillion, that means uh, on the global economy, citing a report from the Intergovernmental Panel on uh, Climate Change, said that warming is at uh, 1.5 degrees Celsius or 2.7 Fahrenheit, uh, which in this country uh, increasingly seen by scientists as a uh, climate uh, stabilizing limit. It would cost uh, 59 or trillion in damage by the end of the century. The uh, firm warned that passing uh, the uh, two degree of threshold could hit the tipping point for even larger and irreversible uh, warming of feedback loops such as uh, permanent summer ice melt in the Arctic Ocean. And we had a report, we'll go, this is from Mark Zanni. Mark Zanni is the chief economist there. He used to be economics.com. Moody bought him out. He was the economics advisor to um, Senator John McCain, the late Senator John McCain, said that the report uh, was the first uh, stab at trying to quantify uh, what the uh, macro, uh, con macroeconomic consequences would be of climate change uh, written in response to uh, European commercial and central bank. Climate change, he said, is not a cliff event, 
but he added it's uh, one that is getting uh, weightier each uh, passing year. So they are a credit agency, no doubt about this. The hardest hit economies and some of the fastest pace growing will be Brazil, uh, Russia, China, uh, India, and South Africa, the report says. The uh, China is trying to do some forecasts that the uh, Saudi GMP, uh, GDP excuse me, will drop uh, more than 10% by 2048. The kingdom would be, um, it would be the country hardest hit by climate change, hurting the government. They won't go much more into this, but we thought we would uh, bring this uh, forward uh, to you. And let's very quickly... We'll do two things here. We'll uh, go to uh, Real Clear Politics, uh, hopefully, and uh, check on the current polling and see if there's a current polling. We usually always line this up. We're not, of course, using a teleprompter today, but we thought we would uh, take a quick look here. And I go on Friday, Java, or the week that was. We did uh, fall back upon uh, Charlie Cook, one of the better uh, prognosticators out there. And let's see, okay. We're coming with it today. Hopefully we'll have something here. Well, we really don't. Uh, other than the approval rating is all we have today. Uh, and that's from Rasmus. And that's 50. That, he's been around that DJ Trump, that is. Uh, we do have some ABC here. This was on Sunday the 7th. I looked at this poll here. Uh, this is uh, Trump versus uh, Biden. Uh, Biden's up by 10, according to this. And, and this goes on and on. Harris is up by 2, 48 to 46, over DJ Trump. Bernie Sanders is up by 1, 49. That's statistically a tie over DJ Trump. And Elizabeth Warren is actually tied uh, with him. And uh, Buddha Judge, well, they're tied up there. I wouldn't uh, look at that as being a much of a poll out there. But this is ABC News, Washington Post uh, poll. Way out there, uh, 10% uh, up there. And if we go back to Wednesday, we have another ABC News, Washington Post poll. That has Biden up by 11. Now he's at 30. Uh, this has uh, Kamala Harris at 13. Uh, Bernie at uh, 12. Liz Warren at uh, Bernie at 19. Excuse me, Liz Warren at 12. Will Judge has fallen down here to four. Beto has got the magic too. We started talking about that. Senator Booker of New Jersey at one, and uh, Ulian Castro. Uh, is at three in this uh, poll, and uh, Amy Klobuchar is at two, and so forth and so on. Just to kind of get an idea. And if we go to Yuga, much closer race here. This is on Wednesday. Um, Biden is up by four. Kamala Harris at 15. Bernie actually at uh, nine. And they have Elizabeth Warren at 19. This is Yuga. Anyway. There's so much uh, for the uh, polling here. And let me just take a very quick look over at ESPN. This will be the all-star game coming up here. We'll hopefully try to do... Uh oh We do... Um, okay. Uh, we will have uh, uh, one special this week. It'll be called uh, Podcast... And a more podcast effectively to that. Uh, this is ESPN. And of course, we're on the All Star uh, break here. We're looking at the injury report there, and it uh, didn't look as good as it should have been looking. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so this is, um, let's see, what do we got going here? Oh, it's a home run derby. Uh, home run derby, uh, the $1 million derby. Uh, 
Going down the All Star Game uh, picks. Well, we'll close it out with this, I guess. Uh, oh, here we go. Uh, 514 foot homer, midsummer uh, slugfest, home of Derby. And right, uh, in Cleveland, yes, I guess we had that right. Kristen uh, Yelich, who. Uh, oh, he pulled out of the home of Derby anyway. Well, who was picked to win it? Well, they have uh, John Lee, uh, Dan Mullen, Jeffrey. Uh, oh, whoops. I'm sorry about that. This is uh, Pete uh, Fonso. This are the uh, various people that Josh Bell. And let's see who else they picked to win here. Yeah, I was getting the actual column, it's not them. And uh, Matt uh, Chapman, so a bunch of sluggers slugging along here to win this home room derby. Josh Bell, of course, he's with the Pirates. And uh, I'm going to create the most excitement there. Uh, hmm. Brother Mira, excuse me. Ray old Jr. there, and who else there? Well, I guess it's all him. It's Josh Bell. So basically, it's all Josh Bell here. The All Star game, who will win and by what score? Well, they predict uh, the AL uh, by 4 to 3. Uh, in the past 30 uh, games, the uh, American League is 24 and 6. So one, uh, one predicts the National League will win by 12 to 7. This is a guy named Lee and Mullen, uh, National League by 9 to 7 there. That would be interesting to see. Uh, what went wrong? Uh, Bryce Hopper? I was missing uh, from uh, the All Star game. Downtown Cleveland. Huh? Mm-hmm. Bryce Harper, the biggest name, most recognized player in sports. The only problem is that Harper is not uh, an all-star. Hmm. That's interesting. I didn't know he was not an all-star. Anyway, he's evidently not, so. There we go. And we'll see if we can get Mr. Bell up here as hopefully our little photo here. We shall see. Nonetheless, this will do it for the uh, Monday morning quarterback on the 8th of July, 2019. Uh, Boston Red from the Jared Pippen War Boat. We always remember Jared Pippen, who died in 2015 here. So, away uh, we go. We'll talk to you uh, soon. We have numbers man incidentally coming up and also an open source report this week. Good day.